Doing well? Are you doing well? Good, 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 good. Where's my lovely wife at? We have a couple of things that we've got to do this morning. And first and foremost, before we do anything, uh, we need to, we're going to celebrate a couple of folks this morning who thinks they're going to leave us. Uh, Ken and Nancy Kellen has been a part of our church for, my goodness, over 30 years. They have been, they have been in uh, children's ministry. They, we had, back in the 90s when I came here, uh, for the second time, I, I was I was here as a small child, and then and then after I got out of high school, I came back, and uh, there were literally two clowns in the church. Um, and when I mean clowns, I mean clowns with face paint and makeup and wigs and funny hats and funny shoes and funny clothes and 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 my God. Um, and when we, I was, I was, I got to be a part of their, uh, vow renewal and they just wanted something very simple. And so on the afternoon, the former pastors of this church, Pastor Shreffler and Teresa Shreffler, we met in the sanctuary and, and so Teresa is standing there and Pastor Shreffler is standing there and I am standing there and they open up the back doors and in their clown outfits, they walk down the center aisle of the church and I still wish that I could have had the picture of old Shreffler's face. And, and I stood next to, next to the former pastor and he, uh, he had a very hard time keeping his face straight, marrying two clowns. And literally they have been two clowns. They have, they have, they have, they have, they have Love many of our children and my children. Um, they have been involved in the greeter ministry the last uh, few years of, of this season of their lives. Uh, I was able to ordain them uh, here in our church, so they, they were ordained ministers. I also ordained them to the office of elders, um, so they have been elders in our church for my goodness for as long, almost as long as I have been pastor for for the last twelve years. They have been elders in our church and. And we just want to appreciate them this morning. Uh, they are selling their home and they are moving. I'm not sure where yet. I don't know that they're sure yet. Um, North, you settled on a place finally, huh? And so North Carolina, and they're they're, they're going to spend some time with family, and and it's going to be a wonderful thing, babe. You want to? Yeah. Would you like to say something? <laughs> Nancy and Ken, a uh, family to me, and. Sister Greta, okay. <laughs> but Nancy and Ken are family, and I just love them. I feel like a part of my heart will be living in North Carolina. And so uh, you might leave us, but you still have a spot in my heart, Ken and Nancy. Uh, I know it's difficult, but if you don't mind, can I bother you to come up front? Yes. <laughs> And it's a joy to have her son, Les, with us. So can we appreciate Les? Give him a hand clap, too. They have been parents to me. They have been friends. They have loved me. They have prayed with me. We have cried together. We have done life together. And we appreciate this precious couple. And it's... With a heavy heart, and I'm not going to cry, I promise, but I don't, can't promise that. So we want to show our love, and on behalf of the whole church, Nancy, we would like to give you a bouquet of flowers. And um, this, the second gift for Ken is a, a special bag. If you knew Ken, he loves chocolate chip cookies. So there's two bags of chocolate chip cookies in there, one for now and one for later. 
So we send that bags of chocolate chip cookie and a card with you with a gift card in there signed by your church family. And if anybody didn't get a chance to sign it, just go and see them and then sign the card. Because I know some of us slipped in late and and I missed, by the time I was running around, I might have missed you guys. So uh, just go ahead. Kim, would you like to say something? Yes. <laughs> Don't I always? <laughs> no, thank you for the kind words, the expression of love. And I assure you, I'm still a cloud. Because once you are, you always are. But no, really, that was an enjoyable part of our life. It still is an enjoyable part. We go forward in the Lord's name, by his direction. Because without Jesus Christ, we're all lost, brothers and sisters. Amen. And Nancy? I can't say much, but I'm going to cry. Um, I love this church the whole time we've been here. And I don't want to leave, but God says go. So we're going. And I love each and every one of you with all my heart. And I thank you for being so kind to us. We needed you. We had to have you. And you were God's gift to us. Thank you. Yes. One, one more word. I want to tell you, this man is more than just a pastor. He's a friend. Amen. And he's a friend in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. When we have needed the two of them, they've always been there for us. Amen. Regardless if he's going to a hospital to see Nancy or myself, or just saying, I love you too. I thank you for that. Amen. So can we stretch our hands and pray for our Ken and Nancy? as they start this new journey. So Father God, we praise you and we thank you for our Ken and Nancy. I thank you that you will have them in the palm of your hand and you're going to protect them and guide them and direct every step that they take. We thank you for our beloved. God, they are going away, but they still have a place in our heart and cause them to know that they are closer to us and closer to you like before, never before. We thank you for this precious couple and how they have poured their hearts out for the children, for the church, for each one of us. The lives that they have changed will never be the same because of our Ken and Nancy. And we ask that you bless them. God bless them like never before. God, just give them the peace of God. Strengthen their body, Lord, to continue this journey and enjoy their family in North Carolina. We thank you for all of those things, and we give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And, and please do not leave. Please make sure you stay and fellowship. You'll get a chance to sit down and talk to them. They're planning a yard sale, and they are planning. They need some help moving, so if you can be a blessing to them, uh, they definitely will like your help. So come see them. Next week, they're planning on get, leaving, loading up the U-Haul and stuff. So you'll get more details from Ken and Nancy, and it, uh, just they will like some extra pair of hands and they're also doing yard sales so go get some good stuff from the yard sale amen. i know we all love yard sales right yeah. so amen all right pastor back to you thank you thank you so yeah so don't forget today right after service we have a potluck and i'm sure there's plenty of food back there so go go back there hug ken and nancy and love on them a little bit and uh while i was thinking while greta was praying i know i should have been thinking about the lord but i was thinking about nancy's cooking and I thought to myself as Greta was praying, I wonder how many thousands of cookies. Would you have a guesstimate? I remember year, four or five years, six or five or six years ago, we started doing a just just this one event uh, on during Christmas. We would do uh, hay rides and Christmas caroling, and we'd get in trailers and we'd go around. and And here would come Nancy with these tins. These, these tins of Christmas cookies, and she'd just pass them out like, 
like playing cards or something. She was like, and and so we all were stuffed in cookies and hot chocolate and and I think she made then a hundred dozen or something then. Um, and, and and so we have appreciated that and every uh, every scoop of sugar has been a, a scoop of love too and and so um, so we we appreciate that we appreciate that for sure. Are you ready to give this morning? And we'll get right into the word. Are you ready? Oh. See, I'm just a pastor. I don't know anything. I don't I just just I just do what I'm told. Um, next week is is we have several people graduating. We have three or four people that we know that are graduating. Either they're promoting from from junior high to high school or they're or they're graduating from high school or graduating from college. We have several of those. Um, and so if 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 you have a child that is promoting or graduating, please see Greta. We want to make sure that we know this week because we because we have gifts for them and we're going to have a dinner for them after church next Sunday as well. Come on, Pentecostal people know how to eat. Come on, and and uh, so nothing like a good old old fashioned Pentecostal potluck. And um, um, but we want to we want to we have gifts for them and special gifts for them, and we want to make sure that you're that your graduate or your promoter is not being left out. So, so if your child is being uh, promoted or graduating, please let my wife know so that we can prepare with excellence and, um, um, and we want to bless them for sure. Amen? Amen. Anything else, Greta, that I need to know before I... Pr- okay, good. <laughs> Father, take this tithe and take this offering and bless it so that more people might come to know Jesus uh, in a real and significant way like we have. And we'll be quick to give you honor and praise in Jesus' holy name. And somebody said amen. amen. Bless you this morning as you give. If you have your Bible, turn with me to Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18, verse 1. God, as we're turning into our Bibles today, give us eyes to see what we need to see. God, give us ears to hear what we need to hear. And God, help us to apply your word that you're giving us today. In Jesus' name, and somebody said amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 18, verse 1. Are you there? At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? So the disciples were there, and they were kind of jockeying for position. And who is the greatest, and all of this. And Jesus called a little child to him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, having said that, I say this, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives this little child is, uh, this child like this in my name receives me. So the first five verses, he's saying, that, that, that we need to be like this child and that we, all, that we need to be childlike. Now, child, childlike in a lot of ways is, I remember when I was a child that I used to fight with my friends and then the next day we'd go to school and we'd be okay again. And my mom would say, does that kid still giving you problems at school? Oh, Johnny, oh, me, him and I are best buds again. He's coming over today to play. And we'd scrap, with each other, we'd scrap with each other on a Monday, but then on by Tuesday or Wednesday, we were best friends again. And then we pick it up in verse 6. But whoever causes one of these little ones, but whoever causes one of these little ones who believes in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and were drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of offenses, for offenses must come, 
but woe to that man by whom the offenses come. We live in such a world today where everything is offensive. If, if you turn on the news today, it's black and white. And it's, 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 it's still black versus white. And, 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 I, and I, as I've been watching this lately, as the racial tensions seems like have just been escalating and not de-escalating after all of these years, after fighting for, for literally 200 years over race, something that we cannot control. Somebody recently asked me, they said, Pastor, are you proud to be white? And I said, no. I'm not proud to be white. I didn't have any, I didn't have any control over it. And so why, am I so why am I so hung up on the things that I cannot control? I'm not proud or unproud. I just, I, I is what I is. And I can't help how, what God... What color God created me, it shouldn't matter what color God created me because if I bleed, I bleed red. And if someone else of a different color bleeds, he's going to bleed red. It's the same creator that created all of us. He just left some of us in the oven longer. Because it would be awfully boring if we were all the same color. I don't know about you, but every now and then I like chocolate. Come on, somebody. And every now and then I like a little vanilla in my bowl too. Come on, somebody. And when I've been on the motorcycle for too long and I'm all red, I like a little strawberry. Come on, somebody. You look at the Middle East today and it's, and it's Jew versus Palestinian. It's the, and you know what? It's the same old trick of the devil from the beginning from when, when, when Abraham had Ishmael. I find it interesting that this devil of our, in our lives, this enemy of our soul, always uses, he's not smart enough to use a new trick. He just keeps rehearsing an old trick. See, somebody said, well, what do you think about New Age? New Age is an old trick with a new name. It's if anything can get your eyes off of Jesus, it's still an old trick. It may have a new face to it, but it's still the same old trick that tries to get you with an antichrist spirit that tries to get you away from the things of God and onto self. The devil's not smart enough to make new tricks. And we're and we're stupid enough to continue to follow and to fall for the still same tricks. He don't have to invent something. We just keep falling for the same stupid... Verse 8. If your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. It's better for you to enter into life lame and maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into the everlasting fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. It's better for you to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes and be cast into hellfire. Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. And he's not just talking children, he's talking people of young faith. For I say to you that in heaven their angels always see my face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine and go to the mountains to seek the one that is straying? And if he should find it, surely I say to you, he rejoices more over that sheep than over the ninety-nine that did not go astray. 
For so it is not even the will of the Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Verse 15. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and put it all over Facebook. Oh, this is a different translation I have. Oh, am I in verse 15? Verse 15. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go tell it to all the folks in the church lobby. No. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. That must be our heart when we get offended or when we get wounded or when we get hurt is I'm going to talk to my brother because I'm wounded and my goal is to gain back my brother. Amen. Listen to me. Not to set them straight. God sets people straight. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. No, honey, you better. You need all the brain you can get. You can. Keep, you need to keep all that you got. You don't. You just. You just. You just. No, 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 no. That's the wrong. I'm going. I'm going to set them right. I'm going to set them straight. I'm going to get. No, 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 no. My heart is. He sinned against me, and I'm hurt and I'm wounded, and I'm going to go make it right with them because I want to gain my brother. Verse 16, but if he will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses to even to hear the church, let him be like a heathen and a tax collector. It means let him go. It means let him go. We today in this society that if we don't agree with everybody, we just let them go on the first. That's not biblical. The biblical is, I have a problem with somebody, I need to go to them because I want it, I want it, to, I want it to go right with them. Listen to me, I'll help you in your relationships. Then you gain your brother back. But if he still didn't understand or still didn't get it or still... You can't help how people respond to you. You can only do what you do. And if they don't respond to you, then, then, then they don't. But then, but then God gives another remedy. If he doesn't receive it, then take, take a couple of people with you to try, to try to resolve the situation. And then if they don't resolve the situation, then tell it to the church. Don't come to me. Oh, do you know what so-and-so did? I don't want to hear it. Have you done number one and number two yet? Because I'm number three. And until you've done one and two, I don't want to hear it. You need to shut your mouth. Because I'll tell you, did you do one and did you do two? Well, then, then don't talk. Because don't. then that becomes gossip. Surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if, that if any two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where there are two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So, so see, why did he say, if two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst of them? Because if you're there with your, with your person who, who you're not getting along with, you're there, they're there. That's two. God is in the midst and you should be able to reconcile. 
See, we pull that out of script. We pull that out of context too much. Well, we're blessed God, where there's two or three, they're gathered in His name. He's in the midst of them. He's talking in the context of your problems, of your relationship with you, with your offense. God is in the midst of you, in the middle of your offense. And if you love God and they love God, then you should be able to come to... If you love God and they love God and God is in the middle, then you should be able to work it out. But instead, we're too busy stumbling over each other of what each other said or did or their color or their nationality or their this or their that or we're jealous or we can't... Oh my God, I'm so tired of jealousy in the kingdom. We don't have, we don't have time for it. There's people literally across the street dying and going to hell and we're too busy fighting each other inside the church. Right. Tiffany, I'm going to pick on you. Did you see the diamond... On her ring? She must lean when she... Ha Who cares? Church, we got to take our mouths off each other. Stop judging people. Stop being nasty to people. Stop shunning people because they either have something or they don't have something. Oh my goodness. Do you see what they drive? Who? Who who cares? If we open the door, if we open the door, we can hear all your new cars rusting anyway. So all of you who's driving 2020s and 2021s, God bless you. Yours is rusting just as fast as my 2013. It might not be as rusting as, as much as my wife's 2004, but it's... We have to learn. I say this a lot, and it's spiritual. Somebody said, how could you say that from a pulpit? Easy. We need, to, we need to learn how to keep our mouths off each other. Well, do you know what Gina and... Char who cares? Get your mouth off of them. God loves them. God's crazy about them. And you ought to be crazy about them too. Get your mouth off of them. You want to grow the church? Listen, listen. You want to hurt the church? You want to hurt the church? You want to hurt the church and not grow? Keep talking about each other. Keep talking about people. Keep being judgmental. Keep having a sour spirit. Keep, keep. Keep your mouth on people. Because that's what the world has come to know. Why have we, why have we lost, why have we, why has the church lost ground 25 years ago? 77% of the population attended church. Now, 42% of the population attends church. We're making it easy for the devil. Because we can't keep our mouth off people. It's horrible. I expected to be treated badly by the world, but you know what? In many cases, I'm treated better by the world than I am by people in my own church. And those are the... They're the, the world is supposed to be the lighters, the, the, the liars, the cheaters, the... The drunks, the the punks, the broke, busted, and disgusted, the the ones who have no hope, the ones who have no peace, the ones who have no key for the locks that they're they're bound by. And in many cases, I'm treated worse in the church than I am in the. And then we and then we have the audacity. Listen to me, we have the audacity to tell people all the time, "You ought to come to church." Why? 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 Why would they want to? 
if we're going to just be just as bad as the world. We're mean to our waitresses and our waiters, and then we hand them an invite card. Don't, 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 don't. Get rid of them. Get them out of your purse. Get them out of your purse. If you're going to be nasty and not tip them, don't you dare tell them you come to this church. Tell them you go to Trinity Southern Baptist or something. <laughs> I'll get you some of their invite cards, but... Makes me sick. We, we call Disneyland and Disney World the happiest place on earth. We should be the happiest people on earth. So why don't we, and I'm not mad at nobody, I'm just, I'm just instructing our church in the way they should go. And sometimes I'm a cupcake and sometimes I'm sandpaper and honey, today I'm going to be sandpaper. All the counseling that I do is from wounded Christians. If we'd stop, you'd make my job easier if you stopped wounding people. I can't, whether it's racism or ethnicity or have the haves versus the have-nots or, 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 or just being judged. We can't, church, we cannot be. And don't fall for the lie of the enemy that would try to get you to get your eyes off of him and onto people. Because then you're being used by Satan. To continue to hurt the gospel and to hurt the testimony of our Savior. Because Jesus isn't that way. Matthew 7. Go back a few chapters. Matthew 7. Verse 1. Judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look, a plank is in your own eye. What he's saying is a couple of things there is that before you start judging other people and start trying to fix other people, you better make sure that your household is in order first. And, and, and why don't we, why don't we, we need to spend much more time, listen to me, we need to spend much more time examining our own selves than we do need to be examining anybody else. Do you know about, you know about Adriana? Well, you better be telling me something good because if it ain't good, I ain't listening. Because I'm not interested. If she wants to share something with me, then let her share something with me. But I don't need you running your mouth sharing Let me just tell you about Darlene McSpirit. Oh my goodness. You better be saying she's a woman of God and she loves Jesus and she loves this church and she loves her family and she loves and anything else. Just keep your mouth shut. And if you and if you know something, then you just need to shut up and pray about it. This is a little unorthodox message today, but somebody gotta get this. Because if we're going to grow and we're going to be what God's asking us to be, then we're going to have to learn how to love each other and stop putting our mouth on each other and, and, and be different than the world. Because the world will run you under the bus. But, but my Bible says that love covers a multitude of sins. I'm going to cover you and not expose you. But pastor, we have to set them straight. Since when did you become the judge? 
Since when did you become the Holy Spirit? Since when did you become all righteous, all knowing Maharasi? Oh, last I checked at Fry's, there wasn't a saint candle for you. I'm so worried. I'm so worried about my brother who. God says, little bitty, little, little bitty thing. And I'm over here and got this thing in my eye. And instead, I ought to get on my face before God. And say, God, look at my eye. I got something in it. And I'm nasty. Help me, God, with my own eyes. So I can see. So I can be free. In Jesus' name. And God, help me to stop looking at what other people are struggling with and let me pray, P-R-A-Y, for them. And then we touch heaven for them in our private closet on our face before God to say, oh, they're my brother, they're my sister, they're, they're the ones that I love. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be spending eternity with them. I ought to practice on getting along with them now. Because the way God's sense of humor is, is guess what? I'm going to be right next door neighbors to them. Oh, God. When's the last time we prayed, Lord, search my eyes. I like what David said. He said, Lord, search me, oh God. Search me, oh God. Search me, oh God. How, how about we start praying the prayer? Search me, oh God. Search me. Me, oh God. But our insides want to say, oh, but search D. No, 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 no. In fact, I think you should pray for yourself more than you pray for other people. Because other people might not have as big a problem. You, you. I'm worried about D, but I'm not worried about D. You feel me? I, I'm concerned about her life. I'm concerned about her spirituality. But, 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 I, but I really need to be concerned about me because how I deal with her is going to... I'm, 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 I'm not going to be... I'm not going to be... Because, because I, I feel like sometimes when we get saved and when we've been in this a while, when we've been in Christianity a while, we feel like that we have it all together. And we feel like that we have that we've overcome all this stuff and that we have arrived now and that that places us in a place of judgment where because I have been saved for a long time and I have been coming to church for a long time, now I can start to look at other people and I can, I can be Sister Susie so-and-so who goes around and tries to correct everybody because everybody's all wrong but themselves and think that they don't have no problems. Well, the problem that they do have is the problem they think that everybody else has. And so why don't you just why don't you just instead take your mouth off and your eyes off of other people and start looking at yourself? Lord, look at my eyes and help me to stop looking at other people's eyes. Because we have a job to do, and that's to win people to the Lord. But if we're so busy looking at the faults of other people, and everybody has faults. 
And if you don't think you have a fault, that's your fault. Everybody's messed up. And if you don't think you're messed up, honey, that's your mess up. So instead, I'm just going to love everybody and take my mouth off of everybody. Because you don't, you don't know their struggles. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know, you don't know what it took to get to this place where they're at now. And maybe, that, maybe they're not where they need to be, but that's between them and Jesus. And the last thing they knew, need is a brother and sister to judge them and to put their mouth on them. Judge not, lest you be judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged, and with the measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, the plank is in your own eye? Verse 5. <clears throat> Hypocrite. That's what it says. That's not me. That's the Bible. Hypocrite? Yeah, so he's probably going, Hypocrite? No, he's probably saying, Hypocrite! First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you'll see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Then skip one last verse. John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. John chapter 13, 34 and 35 this is where we need to land. John 13, 34 and 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. Period. Verse 35, by this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So the world will know us by our love for each other. And other Christians will know us by our love because we are loving each other. And, and, and that's, that's the mandate, that's the, that's the, that's the gospel mandate, is that, we, is that we love God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, and then we love our neighbor as ourselves. That's what he says, that's what he says, and that's what we, church, listen to me, that's what we have to get back to. We have to get back to, yes, loving our God, yes, loving our Savior, but first John says that if you say that you love God and you hate your brother, the truth is not in him and you make him a liar. Oh my God. So, so, how does that work? Pretty easy. I need to learn how to love God and love people. And if I don't love people, then I really have a problem. I really don't have a problem with people. I really have a problem with God. Gonna, I might not like and I might not agree with what they do, but, that, but they have to live their life that way. And why don't you just allow yourselves to be freed from the judgment and the criticisms of other people? Listen, somebody's always going to criticize you. And someone is always going to be judgmental of you. But let the haters hate. Let them, let them, let them, let them live their lives. But I'm not, you see, because I can't live off people's praises because I'll die by their criticisms. So I don't get really big headed when somebody goes, oh, Pastor, that was a great message today. I'll go, oh, praise God, and forget about it. Because if I lived by their words, I'll die by their words. I 
I can't. I have to live by what, by what the Word says. I have to live by what God has said to me, not by what people say to me. People, people are crazy. <laughs> right? People are, people are crazy. But we need to love them and they're crazy. And take our mouth off people. One of the things we have tried to do, because I know a lot about a lot of people, being their pastor, I hear lots of things because I'm in their homes and, and, and I'm, I'm meeting with them and, I, and, and people have a tendency to share with their pastors what's going on in their lives, and that's fine. One of the things that my wife and I have really, uh, uh, really pushed hard on doing in our lives is, is when Greta and I are talking about a church issue in our home, is the boys are not a part of that conversation. Come on. And, 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 and I can tell you this, and I'm not just telling you this because one son, one son is running the camera and the other son is running the soundboard. But, but my children, and you could ask them privately, they'll tell you they love this church and they love you because they don't know all your mess. And they shouldn't. Because we have learned how to keep our mouths off of you. So my boys think y'all are perfect. We're the ones that think you're crazy, but, but my boys think that you're pretty good. Because they don't need to know. And church, let me tell you, I know this has been a hard message, a difficult message. But let me tell you something. We cannot allow the enemy of our souls to try to, to, try to scatter us by a fence. And I'm coming against offenses in Jesus' name this morning. It's the same old trick that the devil has used for, for all of my ministry to try to, to try to get people to quit and leave. It's amazing how something will come out of my mouth and then before it gets to your ears, offense over something that they thought I did or didn't do. Offended because my wife wears pants. Offended because the, 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 the ceilings are black. Offended because the parking lot has a hole in it. The offended because we have... Offended because my wife is a different color than I am. Oh, it's happened. Oh, it happened. Oh, it happens. Offended because I'm overweight. He's undisciplined in his life. Okay, well, you're a liar, so who cares? You can see my issues. I just can't see yours. So why don't we just keep our mouth off of people? You can't trust skinny preachers. We get offended too easy. We wear our emotions on our sleeves. When, when, we have to, when we have to, in Jesus' name, toughen up a little bit. Keep our mouths off people. I'm going to love you in spite of you. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. And, and just because, listen, you live your way and I'll live my way. And, and, and we just have to, and, and let me address this whole praying for, if you want to pray for somebody, pray for somebody, but you don't need to know all the details. Because sometimes it's the details that will get caught in yourself and then you start, and listen, offense leads to bitterness and a root of bitterness will come in and it, it, will, it will cause you pain. And it will cause, and, and, and bitterness is like a cancer, and it will spread throughout your body, and it will contaminate everything that you see and everything that you do. Listen to me. You must keep your heart sweet towards people. Because guess what? 
I have learned this. I have learned this. I have learned this. Oh my God, have I learned this? Is that the devil uses people. But I have learned God uses people. And your blessings will come through people and your hurts will come through people. But you need them both. I need people. And there's going to be times they're going to hurt me, but, but that's also the mechanism that God uses to bless me. So I can't just build up walls and keep people out because then I'm walling out my blessing. Some of y'all wondering why you ain't getting blessed. It's because you're not letting people in. Because God uses people. But pastor, you also said the devil uses people. He does. You need the discernment. And you need the level of Christianity in your life that can differentiate between who's for you and who's against you. You see, not everybody is against you. Listen to me. Not everybody's against you. Some of these women in this church that desperately want to be your friend, but you won't open up enough to let them in. There are men in here. We could we could have some great, but some of you men won't won't open up enough to allow to allow other men to get in your life to be able to make a change. There are blessings waiting you, but because you're so hard and because you're so God uses people, but if you won't let anybody in, well, Pastor, you don't understand. They hurt me in the past. It doesn't matter. You're going to have to find some freedom. And you're going to have to let those people go. And you're going to have to say, you know what? Well, today is a new day. And God, give me eyes to see what I need to see and help me to be around some people who who will love me and who will care about me and who, 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 who are for me and who aren't against me. Because you can't live closed off because life gets really, really lonely. And the devil would love nothing more than for you to be offended and for you to be off by yourself. And when you are off by yourself, that's when the enemy comes in and will kill you. Just ask a zebra. Just ask a wildebeest. Just ask a longhorn sheep. They get off by themselves and the enemy will pick them off because they have no support system. And some of us are headed, for, listen to me, and some of us this morning under the sound of my voice are headed for tragedy because you're off by yourself. It's time to come back in and let your offenses go and for us to be a family. Because we're only as strong Oh my God. Father, I love you today. And I know, God, this was a different message and this was a hard message. But, oh, God, we've got to keep our mouth off each other. We've got to stop allowing the enemy to offend us. And realize these people sitting with us, sitting next to us, sitting in front of us, sitting behind us, that's my brother. That's my sister. And Jesus, you're crazy about them. And I need to be crazy about them too. And stop judging them. 
Stop trying to get the speck out of their eye when I have a big old log in it myself. I need to keep my mouth off them. I need to love them. I need to support them. Oh my God. God, I would ask right now in Jesus' name that if we have offended somebody this morning that you would forgive us of our sin in Jesus' name. Reveal it to us right now. God, if we've offended someone, if we've hurt someone, if we've lost a brother, if we've lost a sister, oh my God, reveal it to us this morning, God. And Lord, we repent right now in Jesus' name for getting offended and for offending others right now in Jesus' name. Forgive us, God. Forgive us, God. Forgive us, God. We love you. We bless you. We worship you. In Jesus' name. With your heads bowed, maybe you're here this morning. Maybe you're watching me by video today and you'd say, Pastor, I've never asked Jesus to come into my life. I've never asked him to come into my heart. And today, today I realize that there is something missing in my life and, it is, and his name is Jesus and I need to invite him into my heart. If that's you right where you are in here or watching me today, would you just pop up your hand right where I can see you? I'd love to pray for you right where you are this morning. Is there anybody today? This is what I want you to do. Would you just say this simple prayer with me? Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you right now to come into my heart and save me. Forgive me of my sins and wash me clean and help me to follow you all the days of my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this is what I want you to do. If someone has offended you or you have been offended, I want you to go to them and I want you to make it right. Whether it's in this church, whether it's outside this church, whether it's somebody, it's somebody you know, get on the phone today and just tell them, you know what, hey, I love you and I'm sorry. And make it right. Let's, let's get it right so we can grow. Let's get it right so we can move forward. Let's get it right with each other so that so that we could so we could be free. You want freedom? Be free from offenses. And 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 so I dare you. Watch what it will do in your heart. Watch what it will do in your life. If you call somebody up today and say, "Hey, I want you to know I love you and I care about you." You don't even have to tell them what went wrong. Let me help you. Because some people might have offended you and you might not know that you offended them. So if I call Michael and said, Michael, I forgive you today for you hurting me, he'll say, what did I do? And then if you rehearse it, it might make it worse. Because now he's got it in his heart, well, that I... Maybe you just need to call him and tell him, hey, I love you. And you're my friend and I'm praying for you. Or give me a hug. Give me, but you don't need to rehearse it because you don't need to rehearse the pain again. But you've got to let it go. If you want freedom, you're going to have to let some things go. And you need to make it right. And if you need to make it right with one of your brothers and sisters, before you leave this campus today, find them, whoever they are, and make it right with them. Don't let another day pass because that's one more day that you're going to continue to allow Satan to have victory in your life. No, 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 I'm getting it right in Jesus' name. And I'm going to move forward, and I want to move forward free. I want free. We talk about freedom. I want freedom. This is how you find freedom. And it's not going to be me laying hands on you, rubbing your forehead with oil. 
It's going to be you becoming an adult. Forgive me. I'll walk over to Paul and say, Paul, forgive me. And he'll say, for what? I'll say, nothing. Ain't none of your business. And hug his neck and walk away. And he'll go, okay. No, I actually don't have to do that to Paul today because we refuse to allow. It's funny, when Paul and I started coming to the church, Paul, can I talk about you for a minute? Thank you. <laughs> I have the whole sermon. Paul's a businessman. And, 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 and I'm a businessman too in the fact that I am the CEO of this company, of this church. And Paul and I made a pact when he first started coming. I said, Paul, this is the deal. This is how it's going to work between you and me, and it's going to be beautiful. And he said, yeah. I said, yeah. I said, I'm not going to tell you how to run your business, and you don't tell me how to run mine. I would never try to tell Paul how to run a construction company because I know nothing about it. Just like Paul shouldn't be trying to tell me how to run the church when he's never run a church before. And so, so I just keep my mouth off of Paul's business, and Paul keeps his mouth off of my business, and we're good friends. I've never said, I think you need to run that blade. I know you've been running that blade, Paul, personally for 30 years, but, you know, I have a bachelor's degree in theology, and I need to tell you how to run that blade. No. Paul, you do you, and I'll love you. Let me be me, and you love me just the way. And he's never, in the, year, in the year and some months that he's been coming, he's never tried to tell me how to run the church. And in the year and some months that I've been around him and his business, I've never tried to tell him to run his business. Now I have my opinions, but my opinions are like belly buttons. Everybody has one, and nobody needs to see it. And I'm sure he has opinions. And I'm, but you know what? And I'm sure too, and I'm sure Paul's human. I'm sure that Paul has looked at me a few times and said, well, if I was pastor, I probably would have done. Don't go there. But he don't need to be saying that to, to Mark and to Debbie and to. Come on. Well, if I was Paul, I'd run this. Well, I'm not Paul. And I've never run a blade before. So, 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 so the success is we keep our mouth off each other. And I'll let him run his construction business and he lets me run my church. And it's sweet that way. And if we do have opinions, we keep our we keep our opinions to ourselves. And it's a good thing. That's why we just you run your thing, I'll run my thing. And we'll love each other. And if we have opinions, we'll keep our opinions to ourselves. Because I don't have to have an opinion on everything. In fact, that's probably what gets us in trouble. So do that today. I dare you. I dare you. I dare you. You say you want freedom? Keep it sweet between people. And isn't it interesting that he says to love your Lord God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, and all of your soul? And that's our vertical relationship. And then he says, and then the second commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Isn't it interesting that it's in the shape of a cross? Our vertical relationship was with God, but then our horizontal relationship was with people, and that's what he focuses on most in every book of every Bible. We keep it this way, and we keep it this way, and everything is going to be all right. Go, have some lunch. Father, bless this food, bless this time. Thank you for Ken and Nancy. Help us to have great fellowship today as we go in the gym. We love you and we bless you in Jesus' name. There, the food's already been prayed for. Go eat it.